have the working group, and the judge, Mrs. De Cassenbrood, has selected eight dogs for her final lineup. First, the Rottweiler from Rottweil, originated, they say, from the Roman dogs, which had a, a profound effect on the Mastiff breeds. A guard dog, a dog used for security work, a very strong dog with muscular, well angulated quarters to make him particularly agile. A heavy dog, but nevertheless a very quick moving dog. And now the Pembroke Corgi. This is the one without the tail. The Cardigan Corgi has the tail. And here we have a Welsh cattle driving dog. Moving quite well, the ears have to be up for the judge. They like a nice and alert expression, and of course, it's a breed very well favoured by our own royal family. And the judge, Mrs. de Cassenbrood, who not only won Best in Show here, but has judged Best in Show as well, the first person ever to do it. And the German Shepherds got away. The German Shepherd, deciding to go home, perhaps, had enough of Crofts. Now, what is this going to do for his chances, we ask ourselves? But, getting back, yes, back to the handler. None the worse for that escapade, and the handler looks happy as well. Now the Tovura, a Belgian shepherd dog, one of four recognised by the Belgian Kennel Club. And this one has a lovely rich mahogany coat with a black overlay, the black edging to the fur. And here is the German shepherd, none the worse for uh, a, a little adventure that we had earlier on. Moving well. Now the gait is very, very important when judging this dog. Judges put a, a tremendous uh, high price on this. Sloping back, well angulated quarters back into line, and here's the Doberman, another security dog, a well-muscled dog, very clear outline, easy to see, easy of course to see faults too if there are any, moving just a trifle sluggishly perhaps, but nevertheless going fairly freely. And now the Pyrenean Mountain Dog, a dog used in the Pyrenees for guarding and herding sheep against marauding wolves and even bears we're told powerful dog, again of the Mastiff type, with a double coat to protect it, and a, an interesting feature with double dew claws on the back legs, and these are regarded as being very, very important when the dogs are judged. A very handsome dog, one of the giant breeds. Another Samoyed, uh, a, a draft dog from Siberia, from the Samoyed tribe, again with a double coat because of the freezing temperatures, and a fascinating smile. These dogs really grin at you. Very, very handsome dogs indeed. Moving very well there. And the Boxer. A dog derived from the English Bulldog and the German Bullenbeiser, used for bull baiting in the old days, and these days used more as a guard dog. A medium-sized dog, not a large dog, but a medium-sized dog, but very, very powerful. Very, very muscular indeed. This is the last of the eight to move, and now we shall have the final choice. Who is it going to be to win the working group and it's the German Shepherd Dog. The German Shepherd Dog recovered fully from a little outing earlier on, looking very well. And the reserve is the Samoyed. The Samoyed that we saw move second to last, moved very well indeed and very handsome. And there is the winner, this year's working group winner, a very handsome German Shepherd Dog, looking as pleased as the handler. And the last and biggest of the six groups, the working dogs, judged by Mr. Joe Bratton, who goes down the line looking at the dogs individually. This is just a first look up at the dogs, of course. And the first one we see is the Doberman, which was created by a Louis Doberman of a polder in Germany. He was a tax collector, and I've no doubt that this sort of dog helped him in his job. It's a very clear-cut looking dog medium size, very muscular. Originally they were very sharp and fierce, but now they're bold and alert, tough looking, very good guards. Well, this one's having a little gallop, settling down. Moving steadily now, back to the judge. And he's going once again. The giant schnauzer, the largest of the three sizes and the only one in the working group uh, to which it came well comparatively recently they were first of all cattle droving dogs but their courage and intelligence have lent them to work as police dogs the coat is very hard and wiry and dense they have a bushy beard this one going very steadily 
There were 26 of these at Crufts this year, and this is the best of breed. Very nice bitch indeed. Well, I'm sure we all recognise this one, the old English sheepdog. This particular dog must be in with a very good chance because he was lying third in the top ten dogs in this country. A very profuse coat on this dog, hard texture, shaggy and free from curl, and it must have a waterproof... She's taking out the Bernese, so she's taking them out as she walks along. And this is interesting judging. The Bernese Mountain Dog first. What's going to be second? The Doberman then. I'm very happy he is too. Does she want the Giant Schnauzer? No, or the Harlequin Great Dane. Now that's an interesting dog to be in this lineup, a Harlequin Dane. But the Hungarian Poolie's pulled out. To be a very, very interesting looking lineup. And what about the Norwegian Buhan? Yes, she wants that. Well, I can't ever remember seeing a, a Norwegian Buhan in the last six or seven of a group. And it looks as though she's got the old English sheepdog. Yes, she has. And the Swedish Balhund. Now that's exciting. And is that the last one? It is. That's the Pembroke Welsh Corgi. Now, what's it going to be from this? There's the Bernese, a, a super dog. Not only a draft dog, but mountain rescue and earthquake rescue as well. Two entirely different functions, which they do. I like this dog very much. Well-boned, a dog of substance. The Doberman, a medium-sized, muscular dog, Created, they say, by a Mr. Louis Doberman of a polder in Germany, who was a tax collector. Must be a moral there somewhere. This dog is capable of great speed. It's a very sharp-looking dog, a clean outline. Bold and alert. It looks as though he's going very well indeed. The Hungarian Puglia dog, which I must say I like. The characteristic coat gives it this rather odd appearance. It's a very, very waterproof coat. It's a very weatherproof coat. And of course, it keeps off predators as well because it was originally a sheepdog. It's also used for water retrieving. It's fun when it moves, isn't it? The Norwegian Buhan. Apparently, bu means dwelling or farm. So this is a house dog or a watch. It's under medium size, around 18 inches to the shoulder. As is alert expression, it is, of course, one of the Spitz breeds, which you can tell by the prick ears and the curly tail. Going well. Now, what's this? Well, I think this is a dog that everyone will know, the old English sheepdog. The profuse, harsh coat, which has to be shaggy and free from curl, makes it instantly recognisable. It has a waterproof undercoat, but it's not that old a breed. It's about 200 years old and was originally a drover's dog. And it has this odd ambling gait. Well, this really is exciting to see the Swedish Valhund, the first time it's ever had classes of crust, here in the last seven. And the owner looks as pleased as punch too, and well she might. This breed has been in Sweden for centuries, but it is relatively new to this country. And this could be a distant relation, the Pembroke Welsh Corgi, a cattle dog short-legged dog so that he could nip at the heels of the cattle to keep them on the move and of course he has to be agile to get out of the way of the hooves which might come back in retaliation it looks small but in fact there's a lot of dog under there dog of substance and strength lovely fox-like head with this alert expression and the judge has to make up her mind which one she wants there are seven dogs here she's going forward and there's positive judging. She pulled out the Doberman straight away. She wanted that dog, and there he is. 
the best of the working group, the Doberman, and a popular win it is. And who's going to be reserved? It's the Hungarian Puli. Well, now that's great. The Doberman and the Hungarian Puli. group contains a wide variety of interesting breeds with now the moment we've waited for best in show at Crufts 1985 six dogs in the final lineup the Pekingese the English Springer Spaniel the Kerry Blue Terrier the Doberman the standard poodle And the Afghan Hound. A great lineup of great dogs. Our judge Harold Spira from Australia, rare for a foreign judge to tackle the best in show job at Crufts, but Harold Spira has an international reputation. And he looks first at the Pekingese. Champion Mickley Rocks Ruago beat 152 Pekingese to win the best of breed here at Crufts. But he's a big winner and was the top toy dog last year. And this is a good start for a new year for this dog. He lives with 13 other peaks at home in Bradford. And his wins include 15 certificates, three groups and five best in shows of breed shows. His owner, Joyce Mitchell, told me she celebrated his group win at Crofts with a Chinese meal. The champion Mickley Roxuago, whose ancestors come from China, doesn't like Chinese food. But he may be tasting champagne if he wins the top spot now. Beautiful Pekingese. Mr. Spira goes down to have another look at the top toy dog in Britain. The English Springer Spaniel, winner of the gun dog group, beat nine other champions of his breed at Crofts. Show champion Grattenbury Genghis Khan has won 24 challenge certificates. Remember, it takes three certificates to make a dog a champion. Both his parents were show champions and Crofts was his third group win. His daughter is on the way to becoming a champion, and he's won best in show five times at breed shows. He was one of a litter of seven puppies, but his owner, Glenn Miller from Leicester, tells me there was something about him as a puppy that took the eye. Well, he certainly took the eye of the gun dog group judge. The Kerry Blue Terrier, champion Akama, take by storm, and he's certainly done that here at Crufts. He's only young, he's 20 months old, and yet he's won four certificates and two groups already. He's being handled by Don Munro, a professional handler. And this is quite a story. This Kerry Blue is owned by an American lady who lives in the States, and she doesn't yet know this dog has won the Terrier group and is in the final six for best in show. Don Munro told me he isn't phoning the owner until he comes out of this ring. And, of course, he could leave the ring supreme champion. The Doberman, five-year-old champion, Hyroids Man of the Year. Well named because he's now won 23 certificates as well as group wins and reserve best in show at two leading championship shows. He was bought as a pet for £150, but with his wins so far, he's worth more than 20 times that now. But he'll never be sold. He's still the family pet and he's the only dog back home at Huddersfield. He started his winning ways as a young puppy and he's never stopped winning. He's known as Fritz to his friends and he's sired 200 puppies. Some of his progeny have won here at Crufts. Can he now become the supreme winner himself? We'll know very shortly. And here's Britain's top winning dog last year, the standard poodle champion Montrevia Tommy Gunn. Three and a half years old, nine of his puppies were qualified to enter at Crufts this year. He's won 18 groups at championship shows and has also won five best in show awards. A remarkable record. Always handled by 26-year-old Marita Gibbs. Marita won best in show at Crofts two years ago with an Afghan hound called Alfie. What a remarkable feat it would be if she could win supreme champion this year with this dog. And he can move. He can move fast. He races with local Afghan hounds at home. And he's clocked 400 yards in 27 seconds. That's some going. But he won't have to move as fast as that in this best in show ring. The best hound, the Afghan hound, champion Ashina Roal, pet name Hamilton, I'm glad to say. Owned and handled by Chris Amu, who's the lead singer of the pop group The Real Thing. And this Afghan's the real thing, isn't it? It was best of breed last year here at Crofts, and that fantastic coat takes five hours to prepare for the show ring. It was one of a litter of 11 puppies, and it was the pick of the litter. 
There are many Afghan supporters among the spectators here, and if Hamilton does win the supreme title, the roof of Earl's Court should be raised a fair inch or two. Pekingese, we consider the dogs again, the English Springer Spaniel. Which one is Harold Spira going to pick out? He's moving the peak again, and he's moving very nicely. Another look at the other dogs. Tension mounting here, I can't tell you. The English Spring Spaniel, he's fond of that, and that dog's worked hard all the time at the office. The Kerry Blue Terrier. Who's it going to be? He's pointing to the Black Standard Poodle. Champion Montravia Tommy Gun has won it. Has won it. And for Marita Gibbs, she's won two out of the last three cloths with different dogs. A great dog. And the reserve spot, yet to be sorted out, it goes to the Pekingese, champion Mickley Roxuago. The top toy dog, the top winning dog of the year, a great... How does a dog become supreme champion of crops? Well, he starts in a breed ring just like this, where he meets top dogs of that breed. Now, going best to breed itself is an honour, but it also gives him a chance to represent his breed in the group competition in the big ring. There are six groups, the working, the toys, utility dogs, gun dogs, terriers and hands. And the top dog from each group is chosen to enter the final, the selection of the Crofts Supreme Champion 1987. And the first group is the working group. The largest group in the show with some nearly 4,000 dogs. And there are 33 dogs in this ring, all top winners. A variety of shapes and sizes. There's the giant schnauzer, the Hungarian puli, a Newfoundland, one of the giant breeds, Pyrenean, and on the end, the Hoverbard, the first time this dog has appeared in the group. And that's what it's all about. That's the trophy that they're competing for. Now the judge has pulled out 12 from the 33 starters. First to go is the bearded collie. A drover's dog from way back, still capable of working. And one of the four types of Belgium shepherd dog, this is the Groenendaal. And of course, a dog very well known to everybody, the Border Collie, used extensively on farms and seen more and more in the show ring. And of course, one of the obedience dogs that we see so much of. The Briard. The Briard, yet another sheep dog. Used by the French Army in World War I for Red Cross work. So, very much a worker. Great favourite, the Doberman. Used on the continent as a guard dog, of course. Very popular in the show ring. This one needs no introduction, does it? The German Shepherd dog. Still a great favourite and used by our own British police all over the country. A good all-round general purpose dog. Giant Schnauzer, now this is in the working group, but his cousins, the standard Schnauzer and the mini Schnauzer, are in the utility group. He's been used as a police dog as well. Well, one of the biggest dogs that you'll see the at this show, Dane. the Great Dane. Remarkably large, but very, very elegant. And another that everyone will recognise, the old English Sheepdog. Has a rather unusual movement, they call it ambling or pacing. And what a grooming job you've got there. Another of the giant 
breeds the St. Bernard, and one of the oldest, too, because it was bred at the St. Bernard's Hospice about 300 years ago. And from the biggie to a small, the cardigan corgi, the one with the tail like a fox's brush. A lovely tail it is, isn't it? And the corgi without the tail, the Pembroke corgi. A very perky, bonny little animal this is too. Used, of course, for droving cattle herding cattle, nipping at the cattle's heels, and you've got to be pretty nimble to keep out of the way of a, a great hoof coming at you. Looking. And these dogs, of course, are being judged by Miss Jean Lanning, who has a tremendous job on her hands here. And she's pulling out the Gronendal, the Briard, the Doberman. Very popular, that is. And another one, perhaps? Yes, she's beckoning in the Pembroke Corgi. The planning is presumably finished with the other eight. And again... Are the others... Yes, the others are going. Well, they've done awfully well. Twelve dogs out of 33. Something to be proud of. But now, of course, she has the toughest job. A very responsible job. Has she made up her mind? Yes, she has. It's the Dover, but my goodness, the crowd reaction there shows just how popular that is. The Doberman and the Gronendal. How nice to see the Gronendal in such a high spot. The Doberman, who has shown really well right the way through. Gronendal looking up and saying, have I done well, Mum? Well, indeed you have. And there's the Doberman looking as smart as it has right the way through the show. So the Doberman, champion Salates Ferris, wins the working group and the Gronendal reserve moment we've all been waiting for best in show at Crufts 1987 six dogs the group winners before the judge Mr. Bill Pinches he examines the Afghan hound first of all and this Afghan is improving each time it comes into the show look at that movement. great movement the Afghan hound champion Viscount Grant owned and handled by Chris Amu, the lead singer of the pop group The Real Thing. Its pet name is Gable. It's previously won a hound group, two years old and the top winning Afghan currently, and it won last year's Pup of the Year. The Doberman, champion Salates Ferris, winner of the working group, nearly two years old. He's previously won a working breeds championship best in show. He gained his champion's title at the age of 14 and a half months, making him the youngest Doberman champion ever. Professionally handled here for his owner by Graham Hunt. His name at home is Khan, and he lives near Heathrow Airport. Khan has the company of two more Dogmans at home, and he lives with three young children who are responsible for his care. The proud father of six litters of puppies, and no doubt they're all proud of their dad today. There's the Dogman, always a popular winner of crafts. And very smart. judge will be pleased with that performance and the winner of the gum dog group the flat coat uh, retriever champion border cot guy and what a great guy he is did you ever see a happier dog he's won 21 major championship awards and this is the third year in succession that he's won best dog in the flat coat retriever classes he's got a show champion mother and father and he's got a champion sister He's won his title of champion outside in field trials, as well as inside at dog shows. He lives at home in Suffolk with another flat field retriever and four Shetland sheepdogs. Beautiful dog, teeming with quality and great condition, very happy. He's laughing all the time. There's the flat field retriever. He must be considered for top place. Boy group winner was the Bichon Frise, Irish and English champion Theo Pepe Mad Louis at Pamplona. And his owner told me he lives up to his name. He's Mad Louis at home. 19 challenge certificates. It takes just three to become a champion, remember. It's a record for the breed. 
Sired six litters and already has a champion son, so he's passing his quality on to his progeny. Professionally handled here by Jeff Collish. His breeder is a famous poodle breeder. And he lives with two other Bichon Frise and three standard poodles. And he was black the day before he won the toy group because he loves to roll in holes in the garden. He's now got to behave himself. He's in the big ring at Crufts, and he's got a chance for supreme champion. And his owner told me he's just refused an offer of £15,000 from an American buyer. Louis is simply not for sale. The show three times last year at championship shows, and five group wins to his name as well. One of the top winning dogs from last year. Professionally handled by Lynn Snow, for Mrs. Baxter of London. His pet name is Trevor, and he's signed two litters already. A real terrier in spirit is Trevor. Looking at the other dogs, but being kept well away from them. That tail shows his spirit. He's very happy here at Crufts, and he should be. He's got a good chance. Wire Fox Terrier. The winner of the utility group, the Shih Tzu champion Harapine Chaka Khan Antarctica. Just over two years old, he's won six challenge certificates and he started his winning ways as a young puppy. And he's the 39th champion owned by his handler here, Mrs. Rawlings. He lives with 14 other Shih Tzus at home to get him to the immaculate condition you see here, he isn't bathed. Mrs. Rawlings told me that she dry cleans him. Bathing would evidently spoil the texture of his coat. The utility group win was Khan's first, but his owner has won two groups of crafts before with different dogs. There's the Shih Tzu. And that completes Bill Pinch's first look at these dogs. And it's tense now because show now and you have a chance. Fidget, it, you could be lost. And Bill Pinches calls out two dogs, the Afghan Hound and the Wire Fox Terrier. Now this may indicate that he, he might choose his best in show from one of these two. He could still be looking at the others. Everyone must keep showing all the time. You don't know what will happen until the last moment. There's the wire, Fox Terrier, being very firmly handled by Bill Pinches. That African is a beautiful dog. Excellent show dog. In fine condition and coat. Now, who will it be? Well, it's tense, and it's anybody's guess. Two great champions. Which one will it be? The crowd will be pleased with either. It's the Afghan Hound. And he's carried, he's carried on to his platform. The Afghan Hound has won again at Crufts. 1983, parade of honor, a lap of honor now for these two dogs. The crowd wild. There's your best in show at Crufts, the Afghan Hound. It's a worthy winner. Happy, tail raised, head raised. You couldn't wish for a best winner. For the 1987 Crufts. And now a breed that's only recently been accepted, the Border Collie. Well, of course, this has suddenly become very, very popular, and it really is going from strength to strength. But one warning, you need to be an energetic person and very competent if you're going to own one of these. And now, very handsome Briard. A very supple dog, this, lovely and muscular, and their movement is, is very, very effortless. It covers a great deal of ground, and they really do trot out beautifully. Look at this one go. And an interesting one in the last part of the group here, Smooth Collie. Yes, well, this, of course, is, is the smooth version of the Rough Collie, and the, the only difference is it has a short, flat harsh top coat and a dense undercoat and again look at him going and now our form tip the doberman well a 
breed like this, you can't disguise anything. The shape has got to be dead right. And you can see his long neck and his sound shoulders and his good angulation. And uh, pointed him out in the main group as we were looking at them all there. A harlequin coloured great day. Very imposing dog with an elegance and style. The colour's very difficult to, to achieve. Has to have length of neck, limbs and body, but it must be in proportion. Old English Sheepdog next. Underneath all that coat, of course, there is a lot of good sound dog. But it's not a dog for those who haven't got time to give it exercise or to groom it properly. And last year's best of breed here again, the well, Summit. This is, this is my tip. I think this is an absolutely lovely dog. It's well balanced. It's this beautiful, bright white colour. Brilliant. And it's got that lovely, typical laughing expression, which the breed standard actually asks for. And it's popular in the ring, too. Now the Shetland Sheepdog. Yes, well, this little fella had to beat 255 others to get there. It's a neat, active, graceful breed. It's never, ever cloddy. It comes in all sorts of colours, sable, blue, merle and tricolour. This is Summerfield pulled out two corgis. This is the cardigan. Yeah, well, this is the one, of course, that we don't know so well because it's got a tail and that looks a little unusual to most people. They're, they're a very active breed, and they jolly will have to be nimble to get out of the way of the flying hooves. Now, the better-known one, the yes. Pembroke. Yeah, this is the one, of course, that has the dock tail, another workmanlike, very bold dog, and they, they are proper little working dogs. Just look at this fellow, very confident. And lastly, a really interesting one, the Hungarian Pooley. You have to have a chuckle. <laughs> yes. Well, they have this weird corded, corded coat, and the cords get longer and more definite the, the older they get. It's a sturdy herding breed, very nimble. This one's black, but they do come white, grey, or apricot. Twelve dogs then shortlisted. What is Mrs. Summerfield going to decide? She certainly made her mind up pretty quickly. She's going straight to it. It looks as though you were right, Mike. It's the Samoyed champions of Moisky, lucky star of Ostiak with Mrs. Carol Fox. Oki, for short, is the best of group for the Working Dogs, 1988. And the reserve is champion Zali Philandra, the Granadal. Good choices, Mike? Oh, super choices. And, and I think this fella could go right to the top. Well, Croft is known me for... The Maremma Sheepdog from the mountains of Italy. The Mastiff. One of the oldest breeds of all here, the Mastiff. The big, multi-purpose Newfoundland. Splendid guard and watchdog, the Pyrenean mountain dog. I say it was, it was on a film, but I've actually been dug out of the snow by one of these, the St. Bernard. Very powerful and fast sledge dog, the Siberian Husky, and a very rare puffer farm. Well, those are just some of the dogs that the judge, Mrs. Farrell at Summerfield, is going to have to cast her eye over before making her selection. The first, we're going to civil guard dog, the Doberman, champion Salatus Ferris. Very, very popular breed, this. Got a lot of support from the crowd. And no wonder, there were 281 of them all vying for best of breed, and it must have been a very hard job sorting them out. Used to be a little bit tricky, but the temperament now is absolutely lovely. They're well under control. And you certainly need to keep this one under control in that ring. And for a further look, out comes the Gronendal. And the Border Collie. The Briard in the background, it is. A smooth Collie. I don't envy her task at all. These are all beautiful animals. The Doberman and the Dane. This is an interesting pair. A Doberman, Lady Gessler of Bryan with Paul Gavin. Well, this is the first time for 20 years that one of this breed have qualified. Now, this double about turn is a very controversial manoeuvre, which I personally would not put in a competition, because it does favour the smaller breeds. And they 
probably heard the instruction to do it again. Another double about turn. In fact, this pairing lost 11 points altogether, but it was really nice to see the Doberman in the ring. This group now approaching its climax. 20 absolutely delightful animals, including some of the largest breeds in the country. The judge is Liz Cartledge. She's extremely experienced. She judged best in show uh, here last year. And she's looking now at the Leonberger. This big fella is Shermain Dangerton at Tarikoba. He's three years old. Way lovely. This is a wonderful breed. And in America, we don't see many of them. They are registered by the United Kennel Club, but not by the American Kennel Club. They're created, it was a breed created by the mayor of Leonberg, Germany in 1840. So it's an old breed, but it's essentially a cross between the old Newfoundland and the old St. Bernard. A lovely breed with a black mask, very deliberate moving, never in a hurry. Mm, delightful. Champion Darkling Finbar of Bredwardine. Charles, what a big name for a big dog. He's five years old, and he's a mastiff owned by Peter Tugwell and Richard Thomas. Yes, this used to be called the Old English Mastiff, and it's a very ancient breed. It used to be for guarding, and it was often dominated by head types. Judges used to look at heads. Now, to get a dog of this size and substance to go fluently and soundly like this dog is a remarkable achievement. These breeders brought in an American dog a few years ago. He's helped the breed a lot from the point of view of movement, and fluidity. A lovely dog, this. He is beautiful. They're so big and strong and so are these. It's not the same dog. This is a Neapolitan Mastiff. It's Levi. He's a two-year-old dog. Grimior Firecracker. I hope I've got his name right. Owned by Nigel Brooks and Jane Walker, who come from Rotherham. Now, this is another breed that we do not see, Peter, that often in America. It's an ancient breed, a native Mastiff breed from Italy. It has that slow, bear-like gait. You don't want these Mastiff breeds dashing around like an Irish setter. It wouldn't be typical for the breed. They have to have a degree of loose-fitting skin that hangs over their body and over their head. You don't want too much, not, not, not excess, anyway. No, it's, uh, it's also a comparatively recent breed in this country as well. Neapolitan Mastiff. This is not a recent breed. And this is one of Liz Cartledge's shortlist, I think. The boxer, champion Santa Oaks Bebopper Lula. Lula, she's known for short. Four and a half year old bitch owned by Annabelle Zavitt, who comes from Hull Beach, handled by Kirsty Taylor. And she's a joy to live with, they say. And what a wonderful head and expression we were seeing there. This bitch oozes quality. She's a great favourite of mine. That clean outline, short back, and a slightly sloping top line, and this high set tail carried proudly. She's got the most beautiful head and expression with this rise of skull and lovely eyes, and coming cleanly towards us. That's a lovely action. She's a beautiful bitch. And to have won at the Bitch CC at Crufts three years in a breed which has hundreds of quality dogs is a marvelous achievement a beautiful bitch she is and she really fills my eye as well and i love to see them without the crop well it's a success again second time for dave gelded uh, he's got jana here champion salate striptease won best of breed last year got into the group uh, then as well a three-year-old bitch absolutely gorgeous he owns with her with uh, lisa sawyer they come from nottingham well, this is a wonderful breed, very popular in America, too. We often see them with a crop deer in America. And again, we keep seeing the breeds here that we see cropped, uncropped. That does give a different look. We just have to get used to seeing them. It's a breed created by Lois Doberman, who was a tax collector. <laughs> he wanted a breed that would encourage the slow payers of taxes, you see. So he took the Rottweiler and the Weimaraner and the Shepherd and the original Pincher and put them together into this beautiful black and tan dog. Oh, splendid trivia that way. Thank you very much. Giant Schnauzer next. <laughs> this is champion Zafrak Zucchini. Samson, he's a three-year-old dog. Two owners, uh, Kevin Cullen, who's handling, and the Herds, who actually own the hotel where this dog lives in the lap of luxury, isn't, uh, doesn't it, Frank? Yes, he, he does, and I think it might be free drinks all around at the Allendale Hotel for the yes. regulars tonight <laughs> when, they, when this dog gets home. Um, the, the, the tallest of the Schnauzer breeds, but having the same standard. We want a, a short, hard back, high set tail, and you'll see the top line sloping gently away. The coat should be harsh, harsh textured, and the leg furnishing's hard too. We've got this nice long skull and keen expression. He's a very smart dog and showing himself well there. He is indeed. Lovely flat back there. And this, well, what can you say? I love these. This is Australian champion Bouvet Harmony at Crystal Cove. It's an import from Australia, owned by Graham Birch, who's only just returned to this country. Now keeps him in uh, Lincolnshire. And, of course, it's the Newfoundland. First ticket in this country, top winning uh, Newfoundland in Australia. And remarkable, you know, I was round the ringside today, seven deep at the ringside. This this breed has gained in popularity so much over the last few years, and it's a sign of a future, perhaps. The top-winning dog today 
was an import from Italy. The top winning bitch we have here is from Australia. Now that's a sign of international dog breeding. What a beautiful bitch this is. Stepping out beautifully with that lovely top line, this weather resistant coat. A beautiful bitch. And uh, this is a rather a nice animal as well. A four year old Rottweiler champion and Irish champion, Rotosaurs Dolomite at Tickeram, known as Oliver and uh, proudly owned by Barry and Maud Orr. They've come all the way from Ballinderry in County Intram, uh, Antrim in uh, Northern Ireland. And this dog has won an awful lot. This is a real show dog, too. He just loves to stand there and look the part. And this side gate just takes my breath away. He has a self-assured gait that they're supposed to have, that powerful hind thrust and stride. It's so typical of this beautiful butcher's dog, this old drover and draft dog. It's such a hard worker. Not for the inexperienced owner, of course, but this one is a great one. He's a top Rottweiler in 99 and a best in show winner. Yeah, he's a cracker, isn't he? And the sunburn, well, I mean, that face says it all, really, doesn't it? Snowshire champion, Snowshire, Richie's Rich with Chandley Moore. It's a heck of a name, it's a heck of a dog. Richie is two years old, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Tam Nagricha. They come from Spalding in Lincolnshire. You know quite a bit about this one. Yes, right? he's a very successful dog from last year, and he's a, a group winner already. And again, a remarkable achievement to get a dog of such size and substance who can stride out and retain his sound, free movement. Typically, he's the, he's the dog on the Crufts logo. He's had a wonderful year. Lovely. And so too is this. The colours on the Bernese Mountain Dog are just stunning. Four-year-old champion Karamada Sleepwalker, handled by Daniel Cotton, who owns him in Littlehampton in West Sussex. And I think that's very nice. And the colour is important indeed. You want that jet black with the rich reddish-brown points, and you want a white head and chest markings, and the feet should have white on them too. It's preferred but not essential. This dog does have all four white feet and a white tip on the tail, which is so characteristic of this breed. And originally a, a carting dog and a general farm dog in Switzerland. They've got wonderful temperaments and they're a joy to own. They sure are, and beautiful to look at. Well, that's the short list of seven that Liz Cartledge has selected. Now, which one is she going to take? She's got the task of picking the best of a really good bunch. I like this group. The boards are in position, so she's going to have to make her decision. She didn't waste her time. So now it's the boxer. Yes, it is indeed. Lula, a four-and-a-half-year-old bitch owned by Annabel Zamet. The handler is not the owner. That's Kirsty Taylor. And she was thrilled as well. Look at her. Oh, that's delightful. And in second place, the Rotty takes the reserve for Barry and Mordor. He's a big crowd please. He had the crowd behind him there. He, he did, did indeed. Beautiful performance by these dogs tonight. And Samson the Giant Schnauzer takes group three. That's a bit of a surprise, but it's a lovely dog. And extra drinks in the bar tonight now. That's it. Let's all go to Brighton. <laughs> And uh, last year's winner takes group four, the Doberman champion, Salate Striptease. That's Jana. And I but must say, looking better than she was last year in my eye. Just a little bit, but it's the boxer that goes to the final. A beautiful, beautiful bitch. Last year's top Doberman puppy was this striking young man, Ross, or champion.
most very efficiently and effectively. Spread out all around the green bays in the big ring. The judge for this year, Lionel Hamilton Rennick, a man with an enormous amount of experience. First up, the Bouvier de Flandre, champion Canix Zena, winning best of breed at Crufts at just 18 months old for owner breeder Carrie Wilberg. Now, this bitch was born in quarantine, but she was made up as a champion just five days after her first birthday. Quite a first year. That is really so. I bet she's an amazingly big, bold-looking girl for a bitch with an expression calculated to freeze you where you stand. It's now used by police forces all over the world. Rough of coat, but not of temperament. Very solid in bone, and when we see her move, she really has got a driving stride. I think this lady produces the most superb animals, and this is yet another success story. Very sound, not at all overstated. No, well, there's nothing exaggerated about the animal.
you can see the concentration. You can only see the back of his head, but the concentration in that body posture. The giant schnauzer. Back towards the Doberman. Oh, what a surprise. It is the young Bouvier de Flandre that Lionel Hamilton Rennick has pulled out to win the working group. Carrie Wilbur can hardly believe it. What a surprise, Mike. She, she, she's going as if she was in a daze. Stunned. Now, from the five left, it's the Doberman champion Amazon Sound Machine that's going to take group two. In group three, another youngster, Foxwood Incognito, the giant schnauzer. And for group four, it's the Hungarian Puli, champion Wetonian the Equalizer. But this year's working group winner at Crafts is champion Koenigs Zena. Such a young Bouvier de Flandre, a lovely win. Artificial for me. This is a real Bouvier. Looks like a working dog. Looks like it can do its job. Beautiful, beautiful dog. And I think his sister won the group here at Crufts 98, so the record's there. The Doberman, one of the most popular of this group, champion Chance Pixies Monopolis. Jet, a three-year-old dog, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Anderson and Frost, Gene and Alan, that is. They're from Sussex. He's their first homebred champion. I think they sold the first one. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a very handsome dog. First time I've seen this dog, and I'm most impressed. He's got a beautiful, clean-cut outline, a slightly sloping top line with his high-set tail. The parallel head planes are very important here, as to other rich tan markings, which are strictly defined. He's going very well and holding that sloping top line. He's a most handsome dog and going well. He'll make the competition tough here, too. He is a beautiful dog with a gorgeous outline. And an achievement, too, because uh, there's quite a lot of Dobermans competing at Crufts this year. So now Margaret Everton is going to make her selection. That's her final cut. Who is she going to take to win the working group for Crust 2001? Final look at her selection. She has so many good dogs to choose from in here. A beautiful lineup. I know exactly how she feels. <laughs> A last consideration. What tension. I know. The suspense is killing us. She is a Great Dane breeder herself, and she's looking, looking hard. long and hard at the Great Dane, but that might mean that she'd be a little harder on it than usual, but no, is it going to be? It's going to be that glorious Siberian Husky, international champion cryout, with Mir Erstad handling absolutely exquisitely tonight, don't a you think? spectacular performance, and I think that's what I used to three type performance construction all in one. And here we have into group two, the Bouvier de Flandre, champion Koenig Zulu, a top winning dog here in the UK, Harry Wilberg and Fiona Lambert. And here's a beautiful blue Great Dane going into third spot. And into fourth, the Newfoundland, Ayuga, George Ferrari for C Christopher Drury. What a smashing lineup. It's a two-year-old bitch called Freya, Fiona Lambert. 
called Xena, the one uh, best of breed, owned by Jewel and Hugh Fleming from Bambridge in Northern Ireland. Billy Henderson handling. Very important. The head has to have a clean silhouette and from, viewed from either above or the side, it looks like a long, elongated, blunt wedge. This is Philip, a seven-year-old dog, champion Jaffrak Philippe Group. Uh, Mr. Mallard now has the chance. My word, he's judging quickly. I thought he was going straight down to the Dane, but he's not. He's just having a second thought, but he is very determined. Oh, there it is. Jaffrak Philippe Olivier, he's going to have the chance. Frank said, can he actually win Best in Show? Well, this is his third time winning this group. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic for Kevin and Sandy Cullen. And the Newfie, oh, I'm delighted about that because I love Newfies, as everyone knows, I think. And that is a magnificent Newfoundland coming in to take the second place there. Lovely dog, Carlos. And third, it's the Dane. We all like that one, too. I tell you, it's a wonderful group. I think this is the most exciting group we've seen so far at the show. And group four, he couldn't leave it out, I don't think. He's gone over to pick the Bouvier. He's a Bouvier man. He brought the first one here, as we said, back in 1986. But no question that the winner here is a dog that everyone approves of. This giant schnauzer champion, Jaffrak Philippe. Final look at our shortlist in the working group. The boards are out. Who's going to take the group? Well, just look at the outlines of these dogs. What a picture they have made. Fabulous Doberman. The wonderful, wonderful outline of the Tibetan Mastiff. Spoilt for choice here is Mr. Harvick. Oh, Frank. The Bull Mastiff. What a wonderful win for the breed. All the way from Belgium, this is Drago. The Bull Mastiff taking the working group. The, the Rottweiler, the Rottweiler in second place. Group three goes to that gorgeous Tibetan Mastiff. Curtsy from the Russian handler. The Doberman, the Doberman getting recognition, not a marvellous win for that. Uh, only keeps a handful of dogs, but has had lovely Dobermans for years. That's a marvellous win. And that is the most beautiful final four. Gorgeous dogs, but the winner, the Bull Mastiff. Drago takes the group. And that must be an extra special win for them from a... a, a, a and our judge going to take, of course, her first opportunity to have a good look at them, walk the line, looking for those breed outlines, how well do they fit the breed standard, how much do they excite her as individuals, examples of their breed. Lena Hopkin used to breed Samoids. From North America to and Rottweilers, I believe, as yes, well, she's, she's been involved yes. with. There is a real she's diversity a of no nonsense judge, lovely person, breeds, knows her dogs, knows breed type and breeds. Leonberger is really <laughs> impressive, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Hunting, hauling, and the Neapolitan massive. There's the Leonberger. Just look at that. Oh, and a kiss too. <laughs> Almost all of the working dogs are large, strong, and muscular and the, the, animals, and they are invariably the Tibetan mastiff. Very impressive. To many useful tasks. Only Entlebush. Some 47 Doberman. Tom awarded best of breed to this dog, number 5356. Full of courage. The Doberman is a tough, intelligent dog, capable of swift agility, and it was eventually recognized by the German Kennel Club in 1899. Such a popular dog today. Sometimes called the Doberman Pincher, the breed's exact ancestry is unknown. Of course, it was originally a... <laughs> used to help the um, debt collectors and tax collectors on their rounds. A wedge-shaped head, a German breed. This elegant often.
Noted for its square outline here in black and tan, they also come in rust and, rust and tan, uh, brown colour. Square, deep-chested, a powerful dog all through. Moving from Germany. Quality working group. 2019. Bernie's Boxer Doberman, the Russian Black Terrier, the Leon Berger. Newfoundland and, as our eight and the Portuguese water dog and the Russian Dow. So we're going to get a lovely chance to see these super dogs. And now taking a last look at the Doberman. This is Billy, five years old, both a champion in uh, the UK and in Ireland as well. Breed which is uh, almost square in its outline, deep bodied. This wedge-shaped head, firm, muscular condition. They have such clean lines, Dobermans, don't they? And, and it's important that that top line, which they have when they're standing, is maintained on the move. That shows that they're well-constructed and balanced. I think there's something in the air tonight. Yes, it is. <laughs> and they're really striding up nicely. Clean-cut outline. a look at the best of breeds that have been sent through to him by all the breed judges. He'll, he'll have taken in the general outline of the dogs as they entered the ring. Now it's time to see them standing, looking at their balance outline. The dog de Bordeaux there being shown standing forward so you can see that characteristic face and expression. Look at the size of the Great day. Wonderful presence. And that uh, impressive Mastiff and the Leon Burger and the, and the uh, Neapolitan Mastiff. Study of concentration on the judge. To help the breed to survive. Now that sharp, crisp outline of the Doberman come forward from a big entry today. It is Jojovic Penelope Pitstoff, and she's a big winner. She's won 14 cc's, 10 times best to breed. So she comes from a famous kennel in Essex. And they're the wedge-shaped head, the slightly sloping top line, this wonderful coat in great condition, strongly boned, this high set tail. That typifies the outline of the Doberman. Well, if you were collecting taxes back in the mid 19th century, you'd likely, fi likely find yourself in need of a minder, and Louis Doberman did. And so he took a German Shepherd dog and German Pinchers and created himself a breed which took his name. Full of courage, the Doberman's tough and intelligent, capable of swift agility. I think he'd be a very good ally when collecting taxes, personally. I read yes. it so. And this one striking black and tan, but of course they can also come in blue and fawn, almost red and tan. Great achievement for a young dog. Champion Jojavik Penelope Pitstop, the Doberman. Big cheer from the crowd, always a popular breed. That lovely, elastic, relaxed gaze still showing her socks off. This clean, crisp outline. Dave Killerley's had a chance to go over these dogs. He's seen them move again. And of course, at this level now, he's looking for performance. You don't just win the group because you are the best of the best. You win the group because you put in a great performance too. Just that extra 10%. No. That's, that's a be beautiful outline on the Doberman. The elegance of the giant schnauzer. What's he thinking? Weighing them up in his mind. The boards are out. The winner of the working group, Crafts 2018. 
It's the young, it's, the young new look at the owner's face. <laughs> oh my God, she says. Yes, that's, we could read, lip read there. Marvellous. And yes. actually, so well deserved. She looked fantastic on the move right up to the last. Nana the Newfoundland, New Garden Lori Nanya, beautiful working group winner for Cross 2018. And in second place, it's the Doberman, Penelope Pitstop. So a great win for her too. Into group three, that magnificent boxer. Ocolado, the top winning boxer last year. Group four goes to the Alaskan Malamut. That's Snowshoes Aurora Borealis with uh, Jesse Smith Handley. A sporting handshake for our group winner, the first of our group winners, the first of our finalists to go through to Best in Show on Sunday night for Daniel Mary Ball from Blackburn. New Garden Laurie Nanya, Nana the Newfoundland. What a wonderful win. And absolutely. So Meg Purnell Carpenter going to take a look at her best of breed winners. Seeing them run in is the first time she's had a chance to clap eyes on them. Now she's taking in those outlines in a little bit more detail. The crisp square outline of the Doberman. Very happy pincher. Massive Great Dane. Canadian Eskimo dog, and there's a very nice looking Leon Burger there. Moving down to the Mastiffs, the Neapolitan, then the Newfoundland. This is where she'll be taking the general outline and balance um, of the breeds. Versatile breed, the Doberman. Many working disciplines, elegant and proud, intelligent and tough. Developed originally from the German Shepherd Dog and the German Pincher by Louis Doberman, a tax collector who needed a minder, and he certainly developed a good one. This is a very elegant breed with a crisp, square outline. Very big entry today. Very smart, handsome dog. Very versatile, working for the armed forces, working for the police, and great tracking dogs. And a bit of very good handling there to, to turn a pogo into a good piece of movement. Square in profile, sloping top line from the withers towards the tail. Still full of joie de vie, this one. Deep ribs with a slight tuck up underneath. This one are black and tan, but they also come in brown and tan, or rust coloured. Hands a very skillful handler. The Doberman, champion and Irish champion, Joe Jovic, Midnight Express, Billy. Still full of beans. And there, the crisp outline of the giant schnauzer. Ferncliff pistols at dawn for Rough House. Yes, she's, yes, she's got group. plenty to choose from, and she's going to. Meg is going to send them round the ring. Just look at their profile movement, their reach in front, and their drive behind. Also, look at the top line. The top line is often an indicator that the dog is well balanced and well constructed. What is it they say? If it's made right, it moves right. And that's why judges move dogs so frequently, because you can hide things when you're, when you're standing a dog carefully. If you're a good handler, you can't hide it on the move. So the boards are out, and we're about to have our working group winner, the penultimate group for 2017. And the Newfoundland takes the group champion, Mary Bear D'Artagnan. 
Bentley, three and a half years old. Paddy Galvin handling in the ring tonight. And se second place is going to the Leon Berger from Russia. Marvellous. Third place to the Doberman. Billy, champion and Irish champion, Jojavik Midnight Express. It's the Portuguese water dog takes fourth place. So, a very nice lineup. But there we have it. We have the winner of the working group for Crofts 2017, the Newfoundland champion, Mary Bear D'Artagnan. And now I was standing in front of one of the best judges in the world to determine which is the best in the group. So going down the line, the boxer, the bull mastiff. Frank at the moment taking in the general balance and outline of all these dogs. He's, he's just looking for, oh, now what do I like the look of here? The giant schnauzer, Great Dane. On down the line. This is a fat, I love this group. There are so many of the really big dogs here. The working group, functional. <laughs> Neil Paulson saying, no, I've had enough, I'm going to sit down already. <laughs> Russian Black Terrier, powerful dog, the St. Bernard. And down towards the end of the line, the Tibetan Mastiff. Instantly recognizable, the Doberman. This is Cruz, who's three years old, owned by Andrew and June Cairns from North Ayrshire in Scotland. Uh, like swimming, walking, playing with a cat. That's an interesting one. And previously docked, it still takes a while to get used to seeing these with a tail. Elegant and proud, compact, tough, and capable of great speed. That head, an elongated blunt wedge. Nice level top line sloping towards the croup, which is the back end of the dog. Deep ribs, nice tuck up. That's a really long head and muzzle, isn't it? And look at that elastic free stride. Two thousand eight hundred and six dogs in total in the she's four years old. She's called Vonderstram Virtuoso and she belongs to Derek Elmsley, who's come all the way down from Edinburgh in Scotland to show her today. Beautiful clean lines, lovely wedge shaped head and that hard top line. She's looking better than ever. And what a classic example of what we like to see in terms of balance. She looks so balanced flowing around the ring there. Jaffrak Philip was a fantastic group tonight. The quality has been superb. We're walking across now to the Alaskan Malamut. Royalito, travelled here from Italy, is going to take the group. A fantastic win, both for the breed and also for competitors coming all the way from Italy. Who's going to go into group two? Philippe Olivier, the giant schnauzer, takes group two. They must be thrilled. This dog has the most magnificent show record. He's won the group here before, of course.
And now he takes group two tonight. Yes, it's going to be the magnificent St. Bernard striding into group three. Top working dog for 2006. That's Archie. And our group four, Portuguese water dog winning the very first CC on offer for the breed today. Alfie takes group four. I'm sure he's 